I advertise for my company on on link on uh, Facebook, and I get a lot more real conversations on LinkedIn. I get a lot more real conversations from people that want details. They want a meeting. So I'm at where on on Facebook I might get you know, 10 leads and, you know, half of them won't even return my calls. I use a piece of software that actually uh, will do my connections for me based on a, a sales navigator search. It'll send that connection message that, you know, let's connect to see if we can support each other. My messages go over the course of, I think, three months. So by the time they reach the end, they know all about what I do. Six figure business off of 45 minutes a day. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to build a legitimate, profitable online business without shiny objects, without the hypey gimmicks, and without the stress and overwhelm, if you want to make more money without having to be present online all day, every day, pumping out content that nobody sees and hustling DMs to generate leads and sales, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the Digital Trailblazer Podcast, your online business university, where you'll learn how ordinary people start from ground zero with no influence, no email list or audience to sell to, and no business or marketing experience, and go from working nine to five jobs to building successful six and seven figure online businesses and all the steps in between. Learn the strategies that worked and what didn't, learn the mistakes that they made and how to avoid them, and then learn their plans for scaling their businesses and taking things to the next level all so that you can build your business faster and easier and make more money without sacrificing the things that are important to you in your life. I'm your host, Leah Ray Getz, and with me is my husband, Todd. Now let's get to it with today's guest. Welcome to Jill Trailblazers. It's Leah Ray, and I'm super excited to have with us Marilyn Jenkins. Marilyn, go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. Let them know what you're all about. My name is Marilyn Jenkins. I am the owner at MJ Media Group, and I help law firms and local businesses grow using digital ads and Google Business Profile SEO. Well, that's quite interesting. So how did this come about? Well, I've done quite a bit of different types of digital marketing over my career. And through a series of referrals, um, I started doing digital ads for clients and was quite successful at it, helping clients grow. And so I've been focusing on local businesses and attorneys for probably the last five years, focusing really on attorneys and home services. And um, so that's that's kind of where it, it started from all variations from 2002 of different different digital marketing up to running an agency, helping other businesses grow using the power of social media. Well, that's awesome. So what were some of the biggest challenges for you in getting this to where you are today? Um, I think one of the biggest things is, is is helping clients with the process. So it's like, you know, when you run lead generation or any marketing, you also need to be responsive. Um, one of the biggest things about small businesses is two thirds of the phone calls that come into the offices or the business are left unanswered. So, you know, just simply by answering your phone more, which may mean an extra person or whatever, but getting those processes in place to help the clients get more, be more successful with the results that we're bringing in that that's really been the challenge. So we put together processes and trainings for our clients and, uh, also, you know, often, you know, at least monthly meetings to see how things are going, keeping the lines of communication open. That's been one of the biggest things, but that's also helped our clients be much more successful with our efforts. So I'm really curious to learn more about what you're doing to bring in clients because you've got some pretty slick strategies that are working for you online. That's true. Um, I focus a lot of my marketing on LinkedIn. Um, I joined LinkedIn, wow, what, probably 2004. And then like 90% of the people did nothing with it. You know, you're like, okay, I got on it because it was supposed to. Uh, <laughs> so um, about two and a half years ago, I really buckled down and started focusing more on the platform. Um, I now have over 14,000 connections, mostly uh, small business owners and um, uh, law firms. So what I do is I have a piece of software that helps me to connect with more people and start conversations. I also do postings three times a week and not just, all, most of my posts are to do with results that I've gotten from my clients, but 90% of the posts are tips and hints and, and explanations of what to do, what you can do to grow. So I've really focused my LinkedIn on, you know, advice that that is usable people can take it and actually you know grow their business with it 
and that's been able to get me um, get me many recurring clients. I have weekly conversations, which is important. You know, one of the things about growing your business is talk to someone every day that can pay you money, right? So that's what I do is I, I'm doing DM conversations. I'm, my DMs are open for those types of conversations. And I do coaching for people that can't afford the full done for you service. And that's the reason I wrote my book is because of that. And But LinkedIn should not be forgotten about when it comes to trying to grow your business. Well, that's interesting because I know like we push to LinkedIn, but I don't, we don't work LinkedIn. We'll just be really honest. So I, I'm curious to really break down your strategy and what you're doing. So you said three, three posts a week. Is that correct? I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And okay. I purposely don't do a call to action on Friday because nobody wants to do that, right? <laughs> it's Friday. So um, yeah, I mean, basically what I do is I like, um, like say video ideas. You know, everybody in the world says you got to post videos for the no like and trust factor. Well, then you sit here and go, well, what do I make a video about? So I have a series of posts that give you ideas based on what type of business you're in. And some, you know, it's so simple as holding your phone and talking to it, but it's intimidating. So, you know, I try to break that down and make it, make it easy. Um, you know, three things that you can do to your Google business profile to get your phones ringing, you know, those types of things. So I'm, I hate those posts that are like, oh, to be successful, you have to do, you know, to, to be successful and get traction, you need to say this in your post. No, just give value. And that's just, that's what almost all of my posts are. And then of course, there's the, the posts of, of testimonials and, I also like to, to notify my network when a new client signs on, right? Because we work exclusively. I don't work with multiple clients in the same industry in the same location. So it helps the, yeah. you know, the, especially if we're running ads, you don't want clients' ads competing against each other. It's just not fair. So yeah. I think being consistent. Um, also, uh, what I found has been helpful in getting my, if my uh, profile out there is not just post and then they saw, call it post and ghost, but I post, I also go through my news feed and my network and I like and comment on posts. And so I'm involved. Um, so that's the other thing. And what I started doing last year is a new thing, relatively new, is LinkedIn events. Um, you can do LinkedIn events on your personal profile or on your business page. And with the um, live, they started, I think, last July. You can go live in Zoom, connected to your LinkedIn. And so if you set up a, uh, say, a LinkedIn Live, it's a presentation. Mine are usually about 30 minutes. And um, you can invite a 1,000 of your connections a week to your event. Now, if it's a live event, it, it goes through LinkedIn. Obviously, it's running live. And then afterwards, it'll continue to play as a replay. So it kind of replaces that whole get a webinar uh, platform so it's evergreen. This is the same thing. And then you can go in if you choose to and delete that and do another one if you wanted to get to a different audience. So that sort of thing. So LinkedIn Lives have been very helpful with, uh, I do a lot of teaching on it, as well as I always do a call to action and a giveaway. Good. So tell me about that. So call to action and giveaway on your lives. What does that typically look like? Um, I give away, so it's important for um, your Google business profile that you have what we call citations. So you want to be listed in all the directories that that would be indexed in Google, right? So the more places that you're listed, so that's one of the things I give away is a list of directories. So you don't have to go out and look for it, okay? It's a literally a list. You click it, it opens the directory and you fill it out, you know, and you, you put everything in there. So instructions, I'll make sure you do the exact same detail every single place. So like if you're 123 Main Street Suite 262, you can't put STE 262 or whatever. It has to be the same in every one of them for Google to give it the right juice. So I give that away. I also give away a cheat sheet for, um, and then I also, on the LinkedIn Lives, I give away 100% off coupon on my book. So what I'm trying to do is get them more data, more information, more instructions, and still be able to capture the information. Because the only downfall of LinkedIn Lives is you don't capture your audience. And you can make a registration page, but seldom people go there because they can just attend on LinkedIn. It's curious because that seems very similar to our strategy that we do within our Facebook group, but using the the LinkedIn platform. So are you like going the same time every single week? Like you have a set... Um, 
I it's don't. Fun. And I try to do it like every two weeks, I minimum okay. once a month, depending on holidays, that sort of thing. But I typically right. do it at uh, noon Eastern time. Um, that way it's, it's early, you know, it's morning for Pacific coast, but noon, it mm -hmm. works well. And again, it's usually about 30 minutes. I will, I'll usually block off like an hour because I do open the Q and A at the end. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, um, it, you know, I, I cover a lot of the same thing, little difference, add a few things here and there, but yeah, I want to teach people in it and then open the Q and A at the end. So with your strategy, it sounds like you're, you're giving away a lot of free information, a lot of free advice, and especially with like your lead magnet, you know, it, it, it's a lot of things that people could probably figure out on their own. And I know that a lot of people who maybe have, are not creating a lot of content right now, I think one of the, the main concerns people have is, well, if I just give away all of my advice for free, then why would anybody pay me or hire me to do what I'm already teaching them how to do? Well, and I think there's a, there's a point in business where you have more money than time or more time than money. So if you've got the time and the infrastructure to do it yourself, here you go. And hopefully when you have needs, uh, needed help, whether it's coach, coaching or done for you, you'll come back to me. I think it's, you know, people do business with people who do good business. So my thing is to give away as much value and, you know, then they come to me. And that's that's proven over, over the course of time that, you know, the more you give away, but yeah, it does come back. I know for a lot of people that we talk to and they have that concern, like one of the things that we'll tell them is, you know, you, you want to give people the what, but not exactly the how, right? Like this isn't uh, a step-by-step -step tutorial of, okay, so here's the ad manager, here's how you set it up, here's how you, you know, run your butt. But it's it's more of what you do, not exactly how you do it. That's, you know, that's what they need to pay you for. And I think um, that's like the really important distinction. And people still have problems, uh, I think, making that distinction sometimes mm -hmm. because early on when we were doing like an affiliate marketing business, um, we were giving away like all of our strategies for free, <laughs> all of our lead generation strategies, like everything. like we, we told everybody everything for free. And then we created a paid course on it later on. And, and we were kind of worried because we we're like, well, everything that was in this paid course, we've actually already taught for free. I'm not sure anybody's really going to buy this. Well, it turned out to be our first seven figure year when we started selling it, I think what we found was that just like you said, people value the, the time more than the money. And even though you may have, you know, given them a whole bunch of value and you, you just kind of laid it all out for them, they still want the shortcut, yes. right? They, they still want it laid out step by step, uh, so that the, there's no, you know, stone left unturned that, you know, they're, uh, because, you know, maybe, you know, they have some problems implementing, or maybe there's other things that they, they have questions about that they, you know, if you put it into a course format or if they pay you to, to coach them, they can get those answered and there's less uncertainty. Uh, yes. And I think it's really important uh, in, in making sales. Well, I think with the course or with, I'm sorry, um, I think with the course and with coaching, what you're doing as a business owner is buying time. I mean, we all have coaches, right? That have been there, that have been before us. And so that helps us. So I think by giving away as much as possible, and I, you know, I give something away every day. I mean, some a tip away all the time, and you can gather those up, or you can you can get the book, you can get the cheat sheet, you can Google it, right? So I've just put all the information together in a step by step process, and then you know, so I agree. I think, but but people want to be some want to be handheld, some want they want you to do it for them. And I can't tell you how many sales calls that I've been on where people said, well, I just, I went through your free stuff and I was so impressed. Like, and I just had to, had to explore how to work with you because this stuff is awesome. So I think a lot of times when people are fresh and new, they get way too hung up on this. Like, it's like, just give away a lot. It's okay. <laughs> yes. I know. And, and, you know, I can remember early in, in my uh, adventure as well is, is thinking, well, how much do you give away? And you have to look at the level of execution, you know, look at Udemy. They sell, they sell thousands and thousands of courses a day. How many people go through all of them? You know, it's just, it comes down to execution. You need to execute correctly for your clients, make them happy, get referrals. Giving away free stuff, people are not going to act on it. Some will. And then maybe they'll get overwhelmed and they'll reach out to you. So uh, I assume a, a, an important part of this process is always having like a constant uh, flow of new connections that you're making on LinkedIn. Is that right? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Do you, can you give us an idea? Because I, I know on Facebook, like I know that there's a limit on the number of friend requests we can send. There's a limit on the number of uh, direct messages we can send. There, you know, they have limits on on your activity. Does I assume LinkedIn kind of has the same thing, right? Are there limits on like how many connections you can send or, or get or request? There's a there's not a number a limit to the number of connections you can have. Like on Facebook, you can only have five thousand friends, right? right. Um, there are uh, there is a limit on uh, the number of connection requests you can have out. So if you ever hit that limit, then you simply go to your re- connections, go to uh, request it, and go to the very end, the oldest ones, and delete those. So I think it's something around 1,200 to 1,500 connection requests that are not responded to. Once you hit that, they won't let you send any more. Now, when you remove a request, you can't request it again for three weeks, which is fine. If they haven't responded in a month, move on. Yeah. Right. So uh, as far as DMs, um, there's, I haven't seen any limit to actual DMs to people that you are connected to or people that have an open profile. The biggest limit is the in mail. And I'm sure we've all received emails that said, you know, uh, it's from, email, from uh, LinkedIn mail. There are a limit depending on, there are limits depending on what, what level of sales navigator or membership that you have. So but I don't tend to do a lot of link of in mail. I do a lot of connection requests as well as um, uh, messaging within the people that are connected to me. And then I also want connection requests gets rep- responses without getting connections. So if I send you a connection request and we're not connected, I can not just click it and say connect. I send a message. Some people will reply to me from that without accepting the the connection, and we start a conversation. Because I initiated, you responded, LinkedIn doesn't care. Gotcha. Okay, so I want to break some different differences down. So it sounds to me with the content. So you're doing three days a week. Mm-hmm. When I compare this to like a Facebook strategy, Facebook is a lot faster pace, mm-hmm. it seems like. And also it's pithier. I they feel like the long form content on Facebook has gone away. So more so, and it's shorter content that's getting more engagement these days, really short stuff. And it sounds like with the level of value you're giving on your LinkedIn post that they, there's probably a little meat to it, that it's a, a bit of text, it, correct? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I wouldn't do a sea of text, but I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, I do a lot of bullet points and yeah, then, so it's like it, a, yeah, I, I want, something. yeah, I want a lot of white space, but you know, if it's yeah. three points, uh, each bullet point might be two sentences. It's enough to get you to explain what we're talking about and then yeah. get you moving in the right direction. And then let's break down like, well, because just to be clear with everyone, you built a six-figure business from LinkedIn. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yes. So this is bringing in leads daily. This is booking your sales calls every week. This is clearly obviously working really well for you. Just to clarify, is this with a free LinkedIn account or do you have like one of those paid levels? Um, I actually bought Sales Navigator so that I could. So I've got the cheapest version of Sales Navigator so I could actually automate some of the connection and the conversations. And the difference, the sales navigator gives you a way of getting very, very granular of who you want to talk to. Um, otherwise, you spend all this time looking through people and searching. And, and the regular LinkedIn free search doesn't give you the detail. I can go in and say, I want this city and I want C-suite people. You know, So I can get very specific in industry, company size, job title, that kind of thing. And so that to me makes the, the sales navigator very much worthwhile. How much does that cost? I think the one I have is seventy nine or eighty nine dollars a month. I mean, it's not a, a, a it's not a tiny subscription, but the power, you know, it's certainly worth it if you want to be very specific about your potential client. And uh, I know that for paid ads, that same amount of money, depending on your niche, I mean, you're probably getting a lot more out of LinkedIn than what you would trying to generate leads uh, with paid ads on. Exactly. I do both. I advertise for my company on on link on uh, Facebook, and I get a lot more real conversations on LinkedIn with that. With and if you consider Sales Nav is the the you know eighty nine bucks, right? I get a lot more real conversations from people that want details. They want a meeting. So I'm ha- where on on Facebook I might get you know ten leads, and you know half of them won't even return my call. Or they don't book on my calendar. And you're like, then why did you come through my app? 
But no, I think LinkedIn, the people who use LinkedIn, they're there for business purposes. And so you have real conversations. That's awesome. Okay. So let's break down your your daily method of operations for folks. So if someone's really, you know, they know their people are on LinkedIn. They know they want to, to get serious about their strategy. What would that look like on a daily basis? I usually spend about 20 minutes a day on my, my messages. So I go in and first thing I do is look at unread and I reply to everybody in the morning. Um, I go through my news feed and I like and comment. So I've got that. Um, and then new people in my, my safe searches. So when you go to your sales navigator, if you've done a previous search for, I don't know, think dentist or chiropractor, or whatever your particular niche is, if you've done a search, say two weeks ago or a month ago, you can look at that search and what it'll do is it'll show you new people in that search. So you don't have to go through the whole search uh, screen again. You just click a button and it shows you only the new people because people are changing jobs. People are enter the, entering the market, starting their career, maybe making a new career. So those are the people you want to hone in on and do connection requests. And, you know, I send a connection request that says, you know, that basically, hey, I see that we're in this industry. Okay, let's see if we can connect and support each other. And then my next message is a free giveaway. So, you know, I'm starting by giving value. And so that's, that's the other thing. And so, I mean, literally my LinkedIn takes me less than, less than 45 minutes a day. Six figure business off of 45 minutes a day. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the conversations and I enjoy the, the new, the news feed on LinkedIn way more than I do on any other platform. It's it's engaging. It's entertaining. It's 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 really uh, educational. You learn so much more about people. And I've met some some partners that I'm working with in marketing to their. Um, and that's the big thing about LinkedIn um, marketing partners where I get access to their membership because their membership needs my services. So that's another way of, of instead of just like individual clients, I have the opportunity to market one to many, which, again, the LinkedIn events did the same thing. Right. So the the opportunities, if you really look into LinkedIn, the opportunities are boundless. Now, have you ever tried running paid ads on LinkedIn? I have, and I don't know that I spent enough money, but I had, I got virtually, I got nothing. I got nothing for about a grand, and so. But it's not, it's not the platform I'm an expert on running ads on. So it could have been I just didn't do as well. You know, you've got to be, you can't use Facebook ads on LinkedIn. They need to be more polished, right? I mean, all you have to do is scroll your feed and you'll see the type of ads that are running. So I I may try them again. Um, you know, we're working on the production for a couple of videos that might work better. So I'm open to trying that again. And, you know, once you run ads on LinkedIn, they'll start sending you $100 coupons. So it's worth going at it again. It's kind of like the Google coupons. You know, they give you 150 bucks or 500 bucks. Yeah. So it's it's worth it to try it again. So I'm sure the reason it didn't work was me, but it is going to also be a much more expensive platform than Facebook. So, and the reason why I ask is because I, I've kind of heard the same thing from other people is that when they've tried or they dabbled in it, they really haven't gotten the best results. So I'm still trying to find somebody that's actually done something. <laughs> I know. I mean, you see the Fortune 500s advertising all the time, right? And and it might be that I just, I attribute it to the fact that I used a, not I wouldn't say a Facebook style video. It was nicer than that. But it wasn't as polished as some of those, you know, that you see. So I'm kind of leaning on it was probably me, not them. <laughs> it's me, not you. You know. <laughs> so I'm definitely willing to give it another try and just do it because I've I've got so many connections right now. It's just I don't have to advertise with over fourteen thousand connections. There's a lot of people in my network that are ideal clients. Absolutely. So walk me through a, a little bit of the, the messaging process and, and how those conversations go and the tone tone and everything of them, because they get, a lot of our audience is familiar with Facebook messaging and prospecting and that sort of thing. But obviously, it's going to be very different in link, in the LinkedIn world. So what does that look like? I use a piece of software that actually uh, will do my connections for me based on a, a sales navigator search. It'll send that connection message that, you know, let's connect to see if we can support each other. Um, after they accept my connection request, then um, a short time later, I send them a free gift. And it's a PDF download. And the message is basically drop your email and I'll send it to you. Well, I never actually use their email. I just send it in LinkedIn message, right? It's just faster and they get it quicker. Um, and from there on out, I say I explain to them what we do. 
just to see it without any, you know, I don't want to jump into a sales message, but just FYI, this is what we do. If you have a need or know someone, blah, blah, blah. And after that, it's, you know, just, just, I invite them to my Facebook group, uh, again, more value. And then I let it go. And then I message, my messages go over the course of, I think, three months where they're two weeks apart. So I'm not in their DMs all the time. And then, you know, then I'll wait four weeks and send them something else and then wait four weeks to say any interest in the messages above. It's very simple um, with throughout the course of those messages, there's two giveaways and, you know, just uh, incorrect. This is what we do. Do you have any need, anything I can help you uh, meet your business goals? So by the time they reach the end, they know all about what I do. So am I correct in understanding that the software that you use, you essentially set up a messaging sequence? Yes. That, okay. That's awesome. So when you get their email, does that go into your, do they get added to your email list and they get email follow I would, and, and it, it, that's not automated. I would take that and put it into my, my CRM because everything I keep is, stays within the DMs. Um, but yeah, the software, I've got it set up so that it will visit their profile, can send them a connection request, and then start the, the sequence. What's the name of that software? I'm sure people are probably wondering what. The, the one I really like to use because it has the feature where I can message my connections directly this episode is sponsored by ConvertPoint.io. If you're an online business owner and you're looking for a simple, low-cost, all-in-one platform to simplify, systematize, and automate your business, then look no further. ConvertPoint has everything you need to build a successful online business. Funnels, websites, email autoresponders, text message marketing, invoices, sales pages, calendars, forms, and surveys, social media management, membership sites and courses, automated workflows, and so much more. Now, not only that, but you also get access to free marketing courses. So you will learn how to actually use these tools to generate leads and make sales. You'll get courses on things like funnel building, on lead generation, copywriting, content creation, paid ads, and more. Plus, you'll get weekly live support directly from us so that you can ask questions and get personalized help to build your business. We'll help you to build your funnels, write your emails, create your ads. Whatever questions you have about building your business, we'll be there to give you the answers you need live every single week. And the best part is, is that it all comes at one super affordable price. So head over to convertpoint.io to check it out. That's convertpoint.io to start your risk-free trial today. The, the one I really like to use because it has the feature where I can message my connections directly is Wallaxy. And it's W-A-A-L-A-X-Y. It's a French, it's a, it's a French company. And I can't remember, they, they've been around for a long time, but they rebranded about three years ago, I think. So they've been connected to LinkedIn for a very long time. A lot of the LinkedIn plugins for, uh, for Chrome will get you banned. You can get your account back, but you'll have problems. I mean, it, you know, it's like, was it Alfred or LinkedIn Helper? There were a couple of those that if you use them, LinkedIn would, would say, oops, looks like somebody's hacked your account. And then you had to verify and all of that. With Wallaxy, you don't have that problem. And Wallaxy integrates directly into your, your LinkedIn page. So like, here's your feed, uh, go into your network and there'll be a box there. It says, okay, do you want to add this person to Wallaxy? It sounds like we use something similar on the Facebook side. We use group track. Um, so it sounds like a similar type of model, but within the LinkedIn space. Yeah. Okay. So sounds to me that the, the main differences that we're going to see in messaging, it's, you know, obviously you're going to still give value, that sort of thing, but it's a little, it's just more straight to the point. Like, this is what I do. Let me know if, if you need, you know, if you're looking, blah, blah, blah. Right? Yeah. And versus the, oh, look at the picture of your cat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is, it is completely, it completely more professional. I mean, it's, I mean, professional, but yeah, it's more, more to the point. Um, I mean, yeah, you want to be polite and all that kind of stuff, but at the same time, you don't want to, these people are on here, most of them are for business connections. So let's get to the point here. I got something for free. Do you find value in that? How may I help you any further? That kind of thing. So with this LinkedIn strategy, is this something that that you can do like, because we have, I mean, there's a lot of agency owners that we've talked to and it seems like they, almost every single one of them got started by doing like a, a, a you know, cold calling hustle, right? They're, they're either visiting local businesses, knocking on doors, or they're calling them up um, and they're doing that hustle to get, uh, just to get their first couple of clients. Is, is that something you think you would still have to do or? That is totally viable. 25 years ago when I opened a retail store before the grand opening, I had gone around to everyone in the industrial center behind me 
took them donuts, took them things to the uh, gifts to the the secretary out front. I built enough business before my doors opened to pay my expenses. Door knocking works. If that's your client, absolutely. But do you think you could just jump straight into LinkedIn without having to do all that? Or yeah, I mean the thing is you you want to have um, you want to have results, but you know. Not everybody does. Start building a network, getting known, give things away, you know, teach, and people will then come to you. Because again, it's about execution. A lot of people are not, they really want to know. They want to know how to do something, but there's no way they have time in their day to do it. So yeah, I mean, you could easily jump on LinkedIn, choose a niche, only focus on those people, and then start looking. If your ideal client is followed by 4,000 people, watch his posts, her posts, and go to everybody who who commented on it, look at them, build your network around your network. Yeah, and I think you, you kind of hinted at something there or touched on it really lightly about just adding that value. Like when you don't have the testimonials, you don't have the results yet, uh, you can still add the value to build that credibility. And that is so important. Um, the, the way that we kind of explain it is that the testimonials are like third party validation, that you're yes. credible, that you deliver on on your promises, that you're legitimate, right? Right. Um, and if you don't have that, you know, because those are like Amazon reviews, right? right? Or Google reviews. And if you don't have that, if you're starting out brand new, uh, the way that you get around that is with first party validation, right? Giving people firsthand experience of your expertise, giving people firsthand right. experience of uh, you know, the, what you have to offer and, and things like that. And that's what that content, that value that you put out does. Uh, because if you think about it, like if, if you are, it, let, let's say you wanted to go out to eat somewhere for at a fancy restaurant, if, if you're going out local and, and you've lived in this town your, your entire life, do you need to consult Google to figure out who's the best restaurant? No, in fact, you probably don't even care. You you're you're happy to go to a two or three you know a, a business that has two or three star reviews, um, because you've been there before. You know that the burgers are great, or you know the pizza is great, and you can have good service, and the people there know you, and uh, you don't care what Google says, right? So right. so you don't need the reviews. You don't need the third party validation because you have firsthand experience uh, that it's a great place to go, and you can do the same thing online just by adding that value and and putting that content out there. True. And and I appreciate what you guys do on, on digital trailblazers and in, in getting interviews and talking about this. Think about it from a new business owner standpoint. They want to learn more about a new niche or they want to get started. Interviewing your ideal client is a great way to do it. And it doesn't have to be recorded and posted anywhere. You know, Leah, I'm looking, I'm starting to do this. Can I buy, can I buy an hour of your time? And can I have an, I've got some questions about your industry. Can I buy you a lunch hour? And let's, and actually, you know, that's old school to learn a business. But if you want to learn, like say a dentist or a chiropractor, or I don't know, you know, pick something and you don't know enough about it to know what their needs are, ask one, buy their time. And you'd be surprised how many people will sit there and, and they will go, no, let's, you don't have to pay me. Let's just, I'll give you 30 minutes. Be prepared from the moment they step on. Be prepared. That's really good advice because I can tell you that trying to figure all of the, whatever they're going to tell you in that 30 minutes, you would spend thousands of dollars in ads and in, in split testing and everything else. Uh, and probably weeks, if not months of time trying to figure out that same information that they're just willing to give you within 30 minutes. I mean, it comes down to the lingo. It's like when I've known people that when they switch niches, they, they figure, okay, the first 10 sales calls are throwaways because I've got to learn their words you know, learn what their hot buttons are. You know what, if you paid a good, uh, a person that is active on LinkedIn, paid for an hour of their time and ask them everything you need to ask and just let them talk, record it for you to, you know, and you learn, imagine how much time you bought and they feel fabulous because they got to teach you something. And did you say your book covers your LinkedIn strategies? No, um, my book covers, um, my book covers SEO with, um, uh, Focusing on your Google business profile. Gotcha. Okay. That which would make sense for your clients. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is that people don't realize how important or how powerful your Google business profile can be. So that's what I'm I'm spending a lot of time, effort of teaching them that. Most people think it's just a place for your reviews. And with the changes in Google over the past year, it's it's huge. 
You know, and just knowing the power of that makes a big difference. I've even heard of people like online coaches getting physical locations so that they could have, they could show up um, and, and be registered and everything with Google Maps and, and that whole process. Yeah, I mean, you, you so. technically do it with your homepage and, or your home address and then just not make the address visible. Oh. That was not possible over a year ago. So you had to have That's a... That's to me. Yeah. So, I mean, that can be done. The thing is, is like... Also, over the last year, uh, Google's done this zero-click policy when it comes to information, but they didn't actually advertise that or make that announcement. But do a, do a Google search for how to something. If there's a YouTube video that will teach you how to do that, they will give you the video in the search at the top with a timestamp answers your question so that you get the information without leaving Google. So if you've only done the bare minimum of your Google business profile and people need to go to your website to get the information, when they ask a question, Google will give them somebody else. Where if you've taken the time with Q&As to do your FAQs, maybe even a couple of blog posts, list all your services, talk more about your business photos, and you give the answer to those questions, when someone in your area asks that question, you will be the answer. So, And that's a local thing. Exactly. So, so if you're doing the search from Atlanta, Georgia, you're going to have different search results than if you are in Houston, Texas. Exactly. I mean, say I wanted a, a bakery that can make a cake with Spanish writing on it. Well, if you are a bakery and you have you can do Spanish birthday cakes, wouldn't you have that in your either a blog post on there, which it is a Google post, or in your Q&As? So Google's going to keep that. It's a free website that Google gives you. Use it as much as you possibly can to get more business. I've got clients that literally within 48 hours, their phone started ringing because they updated. And I've heard of coaches um, who, I mean, they can work with anyone in the world, but they go through this process with Google because it's just another stream of people in their local areas now reaching out to them and they start to really rank and, and, and get a lot of leads and clients just in their local area. Exactly. I mean, a lot of people really want to do business with someone local where you can sit down and over a cup of coffee and have a conversation or whatever. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that uh, you've kind of niched down and focused your business on, was it lawyers? Or, or yeah, I've, I've been focusing on attorneys for the past probably almost five years. I have other clients that were referred to me that are in the home services, but you know, they're referrals. They're great people and I'm, I'm happy to work with them and and makes my clients happy. So there you go. But yeah, my marketing on LinkedIn is focused uh, towards the attorneys. And um, because again, the, you know, attorneys is a very competitive area. And if, if you're, um, if you're not taking advantage of your Google business profile, then someone else in your area is going to beat you. Right. So was that a strategic decision on, on your part to niche down or was that just kind of the way things happened or? It was, um, I got a referral during COVID and uh, and uh, before COVID and then during COVID, I just kept, I'm like, okay, well, I've got several several clients in this niche and I, and I had more attorneys than anybody else. I'm like, and I'm really over delivering for them. I've helped clients get over, earn over seven figures for my efforts. So I'm like, that's what I'm focusing on. I'm good at it. So <laughs> so that's when, that's when I decided to stay in, in that direction. It's just work, been working really well. So what are some of the biggest wins, like? It sounds like you mentioned kind of some there, but like biggest wins or proudest moments you've had for, for your clients. Um, one of the ones is that I've got one client that whenever we were doing a catch up call and, and I was asking um, how his team was doing and he goes, well, I think we're doing pretty good. We're closing 15 cases a month, a week. And I'm like, 15 cases a week from our marketing. Yeah. So that was very exciting. Um, another client is getting, that's been with me and I've got clients that's been with me for over two years and, um, yeah, over $2 million in, in retainers from, and one client's pushing 5 million in retainers. So it's exciting. I mean, it's again, you know, we're delivering and, um, you know, but it's the people that, you know, we do free training as well. And that's, you know, if he brings on new team, team members, if any of them has any new paralegals or whatever, we uh, will do training, record it so they can refer back to it. I love that. That's some powerful, really making an impact with your business, making a huge impact in their businesses. So that's awesome. Now, what would be your number one piece of advice that you give to someone who wants to, to build a business like yours? I would say not. don't be afraid to share. 
you know. And the other thing is, is when you do have a client, keep the door open as far as communication goes. Um, until I started uh, networking in some other masterminds with agency owners, I didn't realize that having weekly check-ins with your client was unusual. Um, we do a weekly email and a weekly call phone call. Unless the client says, don't call me every week, call me once a month. But they still get a weekly reporting email. So the worst thing you want to have is at the end of the month, be here worried that they're going to not renew. If there's a problem, I already know about it. You know, if there's a question, if there's a new team member that doesn't understand, we've already got the training plan, right? So I think it's keep the lines of communication open with your clients and set expectations. And that's the thing is don't overpromise. Don't do these Alex Hermosi $100 million guarantees. Let's be realistic. You know, don't lie to your client. It's going to bite you later. But, you know, be realistic. Set expectations on both sides and do a really good job and be, you know, Understand your client. Make sure your client understands where you are. That's a good point about the $100 million guarantees because it's, it's one of those things that has really gotten out of hand in, you know, in, in the online marketing space. And, and companies are, are getting in trouble for it now, too, if you've heard about like Anik Singhal and his, uh, his Learn company and getting you know, hammered by the FTC. And, um, and now they're in compliance. But you know, they've, and, and if anybody who's watching or listening to this um, you know, if you're doing guarantees like that, where it's, you know, you get this result or you don't pay or whatever it is, and you're making these outlandish claims, go look up Anik and Gulls. Uh, I think he's got some videos out on YouTube now that are explaining the changes that he had to make to get in compliance, uh, so that he'd still stay in business because they, they, they dropped the hammer on him and, and they've, they've come down hard on other businesses too, wow. uh, because of those guarantees that people were making, because what people do, if, if you know if you're unfamiliar is when they write up the contract they write up the contract in a way where if the client doesn't achieve that result it's always somehow the client's fault there's always there's always a thing the client will never be able to do yep. so you will never have to qualify with it i mean that's why you see these people saying i'm going to get you 30 new clients in a month or i'll pay you back your money plus ten thousand dollars well anybody can spell that Right. But there's always the hopeful business owner that goes, hey, what have I got to lose? Well, you've got all your money to lose because you're not going to get your money. You'll never get your money back. Yeah. The FTC is, is definitely waking up and very um, becoming very aggressive in this space and not just the big dogs either. They're right. going after small people. So it's just a good cautionary tale for folks. Do your research. Look at what um, what folks who've been through the process um, have been publishing and and Clean up your house if you need to, because this is the, the system to do so. Well, in customer expectations, I mean, that's in any business. You know, whenever, when I have a sales call with someone, I explain everything we do, what we do, and what I expect from you before any, we talk about numbers. You know, if you can't bring to the table what it takes to manage the leads, which Facebook leads are completely different than a referral that walks in off the street. And they need to understand that. But offering, you know, it's got to be a win-win or an so that would be the thing is if you're going to start a business, make it a win-win for you and the client. But the client's win comes first. So if people are interested in learning more about you, where do they find you? They can find me on LinkedIn. And I'm Marilyn Jenkins out of Houston, Texas. And then if they want to reach me directly, they can go to MaximizeYourGBP.com and send me a little message at the chat bot in the corner, the digital trailblazer, and we can start a conversation. Thank you so much for being at the, with us today. This has been so much fun. Um, I, there's been some massive gold nuggets. I hope everyone took some good notes. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to the Digital Trailblazer podcast. For show notes and information about today's guest, head to digitaltrailblazer.com. Now, if you love this episode, if you got some value, make sure you leave us a review and subscribe. And be sure to share this episode with anyone you know who could use help to build their business. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.